Hello there. Um, usually you would associate playing the Bowron um, with jigs and reels, maybe hornpipes and polkas. Um, but it's actually really good fun playing the Bowron in 7-8 as well, which is what I'm going to talk a little bit about today. Um, you know, playing jigs and reels all night in a session can get a wee bit boring sometimes, and it's actually really refreshing and it's good having a bit of a challenge to, to play something completely different. Uh, now, seven is quite challenging on the Bowron, mainly because it's an odd number of beats. Um, so you start off the second lot of seven on the upstroke, which isn't a particularly natural thing to do. So it'd be one, two, three. So that is one way you can approach the seven. Um, but as I say, it's not a very natural feel. Uh, so there's a way you can get around that, um, which I call a flat stroke. Uh, some people call it a double down stroke. Um, but I, I call it a flat stroke because I, I don't actually think it's really a down stroke as such. Um, the flat stroke is literally just hitting the skin and coming straight back off like this so there's no down motion just straight back off the skin and then you can follow that with the down stroke so it's flat down flat down flat down flat down and then this enables you to start the second lot of seven beats back on the down stroke again one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you put the flat stroke on the seven right at the end, you're ready to come back on the down stroke for the next lot of seven beats. So I'll just give you a quick demonstration of that. So that's probably the way most people would approach playing 7-8 on the Bowron. Now the next thing you can do with the 7 beats, uh, which makes it a bit more sort of digestible and s makes it sound a bit more exciting, you can break it up into smaller number groups. Uh, so a very common one, for example, would be 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. If you place the accent on every number 1, it's it's quite effective, so again putting the flat stroke on the last beat of the seven. So one, two, Okay, so I'll just do that a bit more up to speed. Okay, so now we've broken the seven beats up into smaller number groups, two groups of two and one group of three. What you can do now is mix those groups of numbers around uh, to achieve different patterns. Um, and, and of course at first you, you may find it awkward counting the beats, um, but stick with it because after a while it, it becomes a totally natural rhythm and, and you find yourself you're not counting anymore. Um, and by counting in the first place uh, makes it a lot easier in the long run. So what we'll do now is change those numbers around so we've got the three at the beginning and then the two groups of two following. So one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. Now you see now that the flat stroke is placed at the end of the three because it's an odd 
number of beats. That's where the flat stroke would go right at the end of the the odd number. So it's down up. Okay, so then there's another combination for those numbers, the, the last combination really, um, which is one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. And again, the, the flat stroke will go on the end of the number three. So one, two, one. Okay, so that's seven, eight. Um, what I'll do now is, is get my good friend to join me, Brendan Power, and we'll play a tune called Sweet Vulgarity that Brendan wrote. Um, and it uses all those number patterns that we've just covered in different variations throughout the tune. Um, and I'll throw in a few more little patterns and chop, chop up the seven 